Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. I've always wanted to build a Hyper-V core server because you can use it on an unlimited basis for free. I currently run Hyper-V in my lab on top of Windows Server that is limited to an evaluation period of 180 days. It can be rearmed up to five more times, so a total of three years. Let's make a bootable USB stick to install Windows Server 2019 Hyper-V core server. Last year for Christmas, my son gave me this AMD Ryzen 9 3900X CPU. I've been collecting all the other parts throughout the year, but I never really worked up the motivation to do the build. My son visited for Christmas this year, gifted me a new PC case, and did the build for me. I accidentally bought a single 16GB stick of RAM when I thought I was getting two 8GB sticks. I went ahead and got another 16GB stick to take advantage of dual channel RAM. 32 gigs of RAM with a hot CPU just screams for Hyper-V. Okay, the build is done. Let's download the ISO for Hyper-V. Yes, Microsoft says it's free. Here's some of the other resources available to you for more information and support. There we go, the download is complete. Let's plug in the USB drive. You want to launch the command prompt as administrator. Run the disk part command. Okay, then you want to run list disk. You want to make sure you're going to use select disk using the correct disk number, so look carefully. Here we're going to select disk 1. Now we're going to run the clean command. This is going to wipe everything off of that USB drive. Next, create partition primary. Now we select partition 1. Next, we format file system equals NTFS quick. That goes by pretty fast. Now we're going to make the partition active. Assign a drive letter. In my case, assign letter R. Okay, so we're opening the USB thumb drive here, drive R. And you can see it's blank now. I'm going to exit out of disk part. Now we're ready to mount the ISO file as a virtual DVD drive. This is so we can copy the files from the ISO file into the blank USB stick. There we go. Select all, copy, and paste. This will take a while, so let's crop and compress a little of the video. Okay, so we just finished copying the contents of that virtual DVD drive to the USB thumb drive. Now, we're going to go back to the command prompt, change directory to the DVD drive. In my case, it's D. Now, we're going to change directory to the boot folder on the DVD, the D drive. Here, you're going to run the bootsect exe command with NT60 parameter targeting the drive letter of your USB stick. In my case, it's the R drive. Now the USB memory stick is ready to boot from to install Hyper-V server. So we'll go ahead and eject that. In the BIOS settings for your motherboard, you must make sure virtualization is enabled. It took me a while to figure out that SVM mode was what I needed to enable. So let's look at the setup here. There's the PC, just finished building that. 
And I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse, a portable monitor, and I'm using this AGP Tech video capture device to capture all the action while Hyper-V server is loading. Okay, I'm plugging in that USB drive. And let's go ahead and switch on the power supply. I'm going to reach around to the front panel and turn this on now. There we go. I can't get over the fact that the RAM has colored changing LEDs on it. It's pretty wicked. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know that was I was getting that when I bought that memory. Okay, here we are booting into Hyper-V setup. You'll want to select the language as applicable. We want to accept the terms. And we need to do a custom install for a new installation. I'm going to make a 100 gigabyte volume to install the operating system on. This is a 500 gigabyte SSD drive. And when you apply this, it wants to make some other utility drives for Hyper-V. I'm just going to say OK. There we go. I should have gone ahead and made the other data volume while I was here, but we'll get to that later. So I'm selecting my 100 gig drive, say next. The OS is copied to the drive. And then we go through a reboot. There we go, we're back now. The first thing we must do is change the administrator password. There we go, type that new password in. Oh, what's this? No, no active network adapters found. I guess it's obvious the built-in Wi-Fi adapter wouldn't work, but the onboard NIC didn't get recognized either. Fortunately, I had this PCI Express Broadcom NIC in the parts bin. So, let's try again. There we go. We have a network interface now. Let's set a fixed IP address. Also, we want to set the DNS primary and secondary servers. Now, let's check for updates and install them. This will take a while, so we're going to go ahead and crop. And then we've rebooted. Now we're back. So we can see that remote management is enabled. I want to go ahead and enable remote desktop as well. Item number seven, enable. And I'll go with the less security. Don't ask me why. Just in case I want to use Android for RDP. Okay, so RDP is enabled. Let's go ahead and set the time zone now. Need Mountain Standard Time, Arizona. There it is. What is telemetry? I'm going to leave it the way it is. So I'm just say no. I'm going to go ahead and log off here. Now, we can RDP to our Hyper-V server from the comfort of my living room to complete the setup. There we go. We're logged in remote desktop. Now, you remember I want to make the data volume for storing the virtual machines. So we want to click past the sysconfig window into the command prompt. Run the disk part command. Now let's list disk. There we go, we got 368 gigs free. 
So we're going to go create volume simple. Oops, that didn't work. <laughs> so we're going to try and create volume simple specifying the disk number. That didn't work either. But at least we get a clue that we need to convert the disk to dynamic. So we're going to select disk using the correct number and run the convert dynamic command. Now we can run the create volume simple specifying the disk number again. Great, it worked this time. We want to assign a drive letter. I'm going to assign the data volume drive letter D. So we just go format D with NTFS file system and oops, I forgot the quick parameter this time. So we'll crop out the formatting scene and be right back. Okay. So we're back and now we must enable the file sharing rule in Windows Firewall so that we can map the D drive on the Hyper-V server to copy virtual machines from my old server. There, you see we have access to the D drive on the Hyper-V server using the credentials of the local administrator there. Now this has been fun so far, but it seems we have difficulty using the Hyper-V manager remotely while the Hyper-V server is in a work group. So you're going to want to stay tuned for my next video where we work through remotely managing Hyper-V server in a work group. I look forward to your comments down below. Give this video a like. And before you go on to watch more of my server administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.